These here are tiny mites, uh, which I found in a water sample and I put them on a tip uh, of a toothpick so you can see uh, the size comparison here. Hello and welcome microbe hunter here. Well, not only on a tip of a toothpick, uh, but uh, they also like uh, to cling to each other in a water sample and to also do decomposing plant material. And uh, there are many different mites that are found. And I'm not, of course, the first one to observe them under the microscope, but even already back in the 17th century, Robert Hooke, he basically said that these are prettily shaped insects and he even made some drawings here and I have to tell you I do not think uh, that they look very pretty here rather they look a little bit like monsters these are Robert Hooke's drawings and then he said well they're kind of prettily shaped insects and uh, he was also wrong about the insects these are not insects as a matter of fact they belong to the arachnids which are related to the spiders and to the ticks and uh, today in this video I would like to not only show you um, a couple of those uh, mites here but I'd like to show you also later how I made a permanent slide um, to prepare uh, a mite. Well, uh, uh, mites, what they do is when they grow, they molt and this means is that they shed off their exoskeleton and in the water sample, I even found uh, an empty exoskeleton here. This mite has some problems uh, moving forward because it's a little bit compressed between the cover glass and, and the microscope slide and therefore um, the movement is a little bit inhibited. And this here is the water sample that I used. It's a jar with algae and decomposing plant material. It's been standing on my windowsill for um, I would say probably a few months already. I always replenished the water when it started to, too much evaporated. Now, and I took a small sample here and it was full uh, of mites of different types and shapes. Um, yeah this one over here a little bit uh, more hairy looking than others were a little bit rounder and more smooth and of course I really loved to observe them and specifically I I like to see the size comparisons here because every now and then you can see paramecia and other ciliates are floating around and these are single celled organisms and the mite of course being an animal is made of mul multiple cells so this kind of uh, allows you a little bit to compare um, the size like for example here uh, there are a few paramecia um, around as well. Well when I made uh, the slide uh, with uh, the mite uh, then of course you have to make sure that you use the correct mounting medium and you also have to make sure that the mite is um, yeah properly um, dry so um, it does not uh, the mounting medium does not mix well with water so it's important uh, to then dry the specimen a little bit um, and then you add uh, the mounting medium and I'm going to show how this works uh, a little bit later well here you can also see that the body um, of the uh, of the mite is relatively dark and you see over here that this is a water drop that is now evaporating it's a little bit in time lapse so I'm already preparing uh, the slide here but the body is relatively dark and this has to do yeah, because with the fact that the exoskeleton um, is uh, absorbing a lot of light and uh, uh, I'm going to show you that uh, later on uh, the exoskeleton starts to clear up and starts uh, to brighten up because of the, of the mounting medium. Yeah here the tiny little dot that you see that is the mite um, so barely visible and I'm using u pearl mount mounting medium now um, to make uh, a permanent slide. It is a very commonly used mounting medium by people who study insects and spiders uh, because it has this clearing action and this uh, will actually make uh, the specimen appear much brighter. You have to dry it uh, for some time and this is now how it looks like uh, under the microscope and now you can see that the body has become a little bit more transparent, significantly more, significantly more transparent as a matter of fact and it's also possible to now look a little bit into the body um, of the mite itself and uh, the mounting medium also preserves uh, the, uh, the specimen from decomposition because it contains organic solvents um, that uh, actually kill, kill the bacteria that might be on the mite and this also preserves it. Yeah so this here is a photograph uh, where it just simply added a little bit of a zoom and a rotation simply to make it a little bit more interesting. But then again um, I think uh, they look uh, quite nice also when they move around and here again we see the tip of a toothpick and I did not use a stereo microscope in this case but rather I put the toothpick with the mites directly under my 
four times and ten times microscope objective and I used a flashlight from the top um, to illuminate uh, the, the mites and I could see that sometimes they started to move away and crawl towards the shadow so maybe they were trying to avoid the light a little bit. It's actually an interesting experiment to, to do as well if uh, they actually like to avoid the light or not. Well in any case uh, those uh, mites here um, I think um, are yeah, maybe not that pretty. <laughs> they look a little bit uh, scary sometimes, um, but uh, I would say that uh, with the over 48,000 different species of mites that they have characterized, um, I think that uh, they are nevertheless a very fascinating, very fascinating uh, group um, group of animals here, and. Uh, yeah, here again, a little bit in time lapse. And if you're interested in catching some of the mites, which actually can be found in your skin, this here is a face mite, then I have another video for you. Yeah, and uh, because Demodex face mites are also, I would say, a very common uh, specimen that can be found pretty much <laughs> on everybody's face. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.